Alrighty, welcome back ladies and gents. Now I want to try something a little different today. Today I'm going to do a bit of a story time. Now if you're like me, you believe that cars have a personality, have a soul, have something more to them than just wires and glass and steel, rubber, something that is indescribable, something that makes two of the exact same kind of car completely different. And I believe that stories like that are interesting, and I want to hear them. I like telling them as well. So today we're going to tell you about how I ended up with my AE86. To understand this story, we have to go all the way back to the year 2002. I know, that's a long time ago. So I was 11 years old and my parents needed a second vehicle so my dad could get to work. Now we owned at the time a 1988 Toyota Tarago. It had always worked per perfect, flawlessly, amazingly. Previous to that, we had a Cortina, and it was a bit of a, a bit of a problem car. But you know, it was it was pretty good. But yeah, my parents ended up with this Tarago because big family. So my dad wanted another cheap, reliable car, which happened to be one of these, an A82 Toyota Corolla CS Seeker with an asthmatic carburetted 4AC in front wheel drive. And that was the beginning of my lifelong love of Corollas. Being slightly into cars the way he was, he put lowering springs in it and changed the exhaust, which on one of those cars makes absolutely no difference but the sound, really, that, that's all that was. And the springs made it handle like it was on rails compared to any other car that I'd ever been in before. So I was stoked. I fell in love with this car. My dad, however, did say something interesting about a year later when I was like, this is the best car ever. He said that there was a rear wheel drive version of this exact same car and he wishes he bought that instead. Fast forward to 2004 and I finally had access to a computer lab. It was my first time. After hours of research on the internet, which was a mixture of Google and Ask Jeeves, because I'm that old. Three things of which were certain. I was now a fan of Ueo Katsuhiro Sama. I was in love with the rear wheel drive AE82, AKA the AE86. And I was obsessed with drifting. For the next two years, I scoured every single paper's auto section seeing if I could find one. Yes, I'm that old. I looked in the paper for cars. And no, I never ever found one. However, in that time, I did come across Initial D. So now we fast forward to 2010, and I had bought my R32, and had had a dozen or so Corollas at this point. I was driving with two friends and my younger brother, and randomly, out of nowhere, one of my friends goes, I think that was an AE86. I was like, what? Slammed on the brakes, chucked a U-turn so hard, drove straight back. And sure enough, there it was, the second AE86 that I'd ever owned. Yes, the second. We spoke to the old man that owned it, and as I already had four cars at this point in time, I did not have the room or the money for another one. However, my brother didn't. He, he didn't have a car at this point in time. And you know what the wildest thing is? This car, this AE86 that we found on the side of a road, well, it wasn't on the side of the road, it was hiding down, a, uh, down an old man's yard. The wildest thing is it was less than a block from where my dad had bought this AE82 eight years ago. Now, after three days of conversing, we came to an agreement that if he bought it, I would help him fix it up or I would do most of the work to fix it up and that way he could drive it. There was one stipulation, however. I would take it on a road trip to Bathurst with the Corolla club that I was a part of at the time and I'd be taking one of my friends from WA. Now this friend's name is Cameron. Now remember that because that is a very important part of this story. This is going to come important later. You see, we were part of the same club, the same Toyota Corolla club. He flew from one side of the country to the other to go on a 3,000 kilometer road trip with me. 
So you know, here's a real one for that. Now, this trip was eventful enough on its own. It could be its own story time. However, it did one thing, and that's solidify my love for the AE86. Now, skip forward to the year 2015, and I already had my first AE92 Levin, as well as my business, the R32, a few different other cars. However, I was doing what you always do late at night, and I was scrolling Facebook Marketplace. Because of course. And I happened to see on there an AE86 non-rolling shell for $500. That one was the one that became my first AE86. So, uh, of course, I went and picked this up as soon as I possibly could. Then, I was scrolling Facebook Marketplace again and came across a $200 AE71 with no interior, and it was like rusty body and everything like that. But it was $200. So of course, I had to grab that up. I stole all of the running gear. So the diff, the suspension, the drive shaft. It was an auto though, so I didn't get the gearbox. But everything else I grabbed, like the cross member and everything. Steering rack, everything that you can think of, I grabbed for it. And then I sold it for 400 bucks. I still have no idea how I did that. <sighs> Unfortunately, by this time, my brother's AE86 had been in a five car rear ender and been reversed into. It was not in a straight shape. It was not happy. Now my shell was dead straight and he asked if he could, if he could reshell into mine. And I didn't really want to. And eventually I came to the party, but it was going to be a shell swap, so I get his old one. He did have a rear cut for the back of the car from where it had been rear-ended. He did get a, a second one of them. So I was going to do the work to that, get that straightened out, and then drive that one. And it would be cash my way. So he paid me $1,500 for the pleasure. Now, I also have another friend. He also had an AE86, and it could not be registered. It was just a track car. It had been cut up, it was full of rust, it was, it was not anywhere near close to street carable. And he wondered if he could get the, 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 the shell that needed work. And I gave him the same deal. So, swap for the shell, cash my way. So now, things weren't looking so good. I had a rusty, non-registerable, rolling shell the upside was it did have a really good diff in it. It had a Hilux diff with the short gear ratios and the, the caliper handbrakes and all that sort of stuff. So I did, I did get all of that. And then I managed to pick up an engine ECU and loom for $250 and I thought stoked, laughing. I picked up for a gearbox, a T50 gearbox, $600. This is after things started to really go uphill price wise for Corolla stuff which was bad times. So we're probably about 2018 about now. I was driving a work truck one day. I took a wrong turn. I ended up down a side street that I wasn't supposed to be on. However, I did notice something out of the corner of my eye. A silhouette of an amazing car. The AE86. Now I pulled up immediately. I went and knocked on the door. And again, an older bloke. This car had been sitting since 2008. He'd bought it before his daughter's wedding and he'd always planned on fixing it up and driving it. And it had just been left to sit there. The engine ended up being locked up. It was full of rust. It was not a pretty sight, but it was an A86. I did leave my number with him because he wasn't sure he wanted to sell it. And six months later, I, I got a phone call. He was like, hey, it's this person. Are you still interested in buying it? I said, I don't have the money right now, but I might have a friend who might be interested. You see, Cameron, Cameron finished his AE92. This is a build he'd been doing for seven years. He finished it. It was immaculate, great. And he was looking for another project. But I spoke to him and convinced him that it would be great to do it because he loved the AE86 as well. So he bought it and then moved to Brisbane. Originally we were thinking of going the 3SG beam swap into it. He ended up buying all the bracketry and everything for it. 
However, with the prices of them starting to go up quite rapidly, he kind of got cold feet on the idea and ended up doing nothing with it for a while. Then he came to the conclusion that we just put the 4AG out of the AE92 into it. And that's what we did. Which he still feels, and I kind of agree with him, that that's probably the biggest mistake. I mean, the motor's great, but so was that AE92 shell. Well, it was a whole car at that point. But that motor is amazing. But that went in the AE86, and then it went away to wiring. So it went to Whitey's, went and got wired up, and the brakes didn't work, and there was a hole in the fuel tank. So he replaced the fuel tank and put a new hanger in it. Stuff went sideways for him here. He ended up putting it back on a truck and going back to WA, where the car sat for nearly a year completely untouched as it was, which is sad, because I think he'd love it now. He hasn't seen it since it's been all... Oh, he saw it once while it was running. But since I've been doing all the bodywork and everything to it, he hasn't really seen it. So, I think he'd love it now. But he ended up deciding to sell it. Because it had been sitting, and he lost all motivation for it. That's where I come in. I ended up buying it off of him. Getting it back here. And then I have a video of it arriving. So, that is it. That, you're all caught up. That is the story of how I ended up with my current AE86. And the story of every AE86 I've ever owned, I guess. So yeah. Thanks for coming along. It's a bit of a long one. I do hope to do more of these in the future. But we'll see. Anyway, you guys have a great day. Peace.